tell us a little bit about the music. Um, it's very different from the real world, from Atlantis. Um, how do you achieve this? Well, you try and um, come up with uh, sounds in the orchestra and in the music that are that make you feel like you're entering a different world. And in the case of Atlantis, I was looking for sound. You know, it's always hard to be original because just about everything has been done. And, and 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 you try not to be cliched, and you try and come up with fresh ideas. And in the case of this movie, I ended up using a lot of Balinese instruments. You know, from from that part of the world, which I thought really made a an interesting sound, and, and it's it's a it's a bunch of bells and gongs and, and and stuff that I think gave it a real distinct quality. And when we're in, in the real world, as we can say, is the music is different. It was h how what kind of music do you use for that one? Well, um, in the, in the case of the, the rest of the movie, there's really two movies, so. When you're not in Atlantis, it's much more of a traditional action-adventure score. And for that, we use very much a traditional big orchestra, um, lots of choir, lots of choral music, um, lots of percussion, that kind of stuff. What attracted you to this project, to Atlantis? Um, you know, all of these, these, these movies, these, uh, the last two I've done with Disney, Dinosaur and Atlantis, have both presented just really interesting and great musical opportunities. I think that's what interests a composer, is an opportunity to do something different, an, oppor an opportunity to make a big statement, to make a big contribution. Um, it's sort of like a big epic. It's like doing a David Lean movie or something from the old days. You know, you have it, you're telling a, telling a big story. Uh, there are a lot of big moments that you can score, and I really like doing that. The film is shown in Cinemascope, and the same way that it takes us through it when we're looking at it, the music act actually is taking, is taking us in there. Mm. Um, how do you get the inspiration? How do you sit down and start working on, on a project? Well, it, you know, it, it comes after a long period of time. In the very beginning, it's very nerve-wracking. It's very difficult because uh, you're trying to push very hard. You have a limited amount of time. Uh, you have six weeks maybe to finish, and you're barely started. And, so the beginning can be very nervous. Um, and then what happens is I get a little tiny idea or one little theme, and I put it against the movie, and oh, that, that theme works really well. But when it gets to this part of the theme, it doesn't work. So I t take that out, and I write something else. And you just kind of build it up slowly, little by little. Before you know it, all these little parts have added up to a big idea. And that's really what it's about. So you actually work after you've seen the movie, or while is it making it? How do you work? Do you read the script and then you start getting your ideas? How is your process? All of the above. Everything you said. You know, it depends. I mean, most of the time, most of the time I do I do most of the work after I've seen the movie. But I will write the main theme from the movie a lot of times before I even see it, um, just based on a script or based on a conversation with a director before I've seen it. Um, it, it happens really in every imaginable way. Um, as you mentioned before, you've done another animation, Dinosaur, and this one. Is there any difference between an animation uh, versus live action when you're doing your, when you're composing your music? There is a difference, although th there isn't a l as much difference as you might think, particularly in the case of Atlantis. <coughs> I think if you're working on a cartoon, then there is a big difference. But this is not a cartoon. This is an animated movie. And it possesses all of the same dynamics of, uh, as a live action movie, except it just happened to be animated characters. So there isn't that much difference as you would think. I think the differences really have to do with very precise synchronization of the music and making sure it's exactly with the characters when they sort of jump off a rock or dive into the water. The music has to be in sync with them in a different way than it has to be with a live action. Um, what were some of the challenges that is that were more difficult throughout? Was there any specific scene or anything that was more challenging to you? I think the live act, the the the, uh, the, the big action sequence, the big, big battle sequences are, are very difficult. Um, there are a lot of notes. It's very loud. It's it, it, a lot of detail, very labor intensive, and plus you're fighting, or I shouldn't say fighting. I should say coexisting with sound effects. Um, so you're constantly thinking, you're not just thinking of the notes and, and, 
and, and the right sound, but you're also thinking of the orchestration, and the orchestration being a certain kind of way so that you can get the sound effects through at the same time. Um, do you work with the directors? Do they tell you ahead of time a little bit of what they have in their mind, or is this completely your, your inspiration and your... It's all my <laughs> idea, everything, no. It's, um, it's very much a collaboration. Um, we, we, we talked about it early on that, in fact, the idea of using the Balinese gamelan orchestra music for, for Atlantis was really not my idea. That was really an idea of, of Don Hans and, and the directors. Um, and so I, it wasn't necessarily the only way we could have gone, but it's a way that worked very well. But no, we, re we collaborate very closely on, on every aspect of the movie. You've done so many beautiful scores Thank throughout you. throughout your career. What's next right now? Are you working on something right now? I'm doing actually uh, my sixth Julia Roberts movie of all things. Um, it's a romantic comedy called America's Sweetheart. 